awesome. <coughs> awesome. <coughs> Hello, awesome. <coughs> Hello, awesome you, human being. Here's one for the road gadgets. And beep, 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 beep. Intergalactic being wherever you are. This is David JP Phillips, your sender from Sweden. To you, wherever you are. <coughs> Voice, it's a weird thing, isn't it? What does it sound like? I can sing it, I can dance it, but the thing is, I can never, never fully become what Corpse Husband is. The love boy of the internet. Why? Why are we falling in love with him so much? There are a particular number of skills in his voice. We believe what he says. And there's a particular reason for that. It is time for Corpse Husband. The man, the myth. Why do we like to listen to him? Why is this voice? If you're new to this and you don't know what Among Us is, it's a game similar to Mafia or Werewolf. We have a group of crewmates on a ship who are trying to do tasks so that we can fix Why is it so addictive? Well, there are particular reasons. And not only addictive, it's very authoritative. And the reason for that is Number one, register. Now this is skill number seven among the 110 skills that I studied. Looking at register, what's interesting with that is that when a girl and a boy hits puberty, testosterone and growth hormone is produced, makes changes to the vocal cords. These changes give an impression that you get a darker voice. And that darker voice is then associated with that person's authority. So the deeper the voice you have, the more testosterone must have been created, and thus the more muscle you must have. And in the animal kingdom, that would mean that it would be somebody or something that we would like to be around, i.e. could protect us because it has a lot of muscle. So obviously the conclusion of that is that Corpse Husband is an absolutely gigantic mountain of muscle sitting somewhere. Our instincts tell us that, oh my god, this man must be a, f a leader. It must be somebody we want to follow. Now there's a danger with that. If you meet people with a low register and you instinctively fall for that particular association, you may be following people you should not be following. I'm not so saying follow, don't follow Corpse Husband. He seems like an absolutely brilliant chap, but it's a good thing to take into account in life. Do not follow your instinct. Use your prefrontal cortex to decide yourself. Let's have a look at what I'm talking about when it comes to pecking order. I found this brilliant video on a Siberian tiger. There's a bunch of tigers playing out going like, I'm the big boy, I'm the big boy. And then this Siberian tiger walks in. Just have a look what happens and listen to his rowl. <laughs> They just give up, don't they? Wherever you look in the kingdom, that low growl shows authority. High level pecking order. Let's have a look at Among Us and a video where it's so clear, of course, Passman did it. He, did, he even admitted it. Have a look at this. <gasps> he self reported it. It's you. What do you mean when she tells us? It's you. I mean, we can. What? No, you. No, I, I'm on the left. Wait, which toast are you talking about? I, I just walked past. Uh, somehow he gets away with it because a little later on, this is what they say. I, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> hey, Saikuno and Corpse, so I'm there shocked. Oh, oh, oh my God, I can't Come believe on. it. He didn't even have to lie that <laughs> game. <laughs> he straight up said it was him and then killed everyone anyway. <laughs> toast, did you know? No, I had no idea. I just knew it wasn't that. me. So Michael, the, uh, the Simon says... Freaking awesome game. You can see how people consistently listen to what he says. As soon as he speaks, everything goes quiet. We'll ask ourselves this. Is there a point to having a lower register? Well, having a look at Margaret Thatcher, for instance, she was the prime minister in the UK. She figured out that if she lowered her register, more people listened. So she actually lowered her register by 60 hertz. In a study they did in the 90s, they had a look at the average frequency of a female voice. And it showed that from 1945 to the 1990s, the average female voice had dropped 23 hertz, which the conclusion came from that as women are moving into the world, workplace more and more from the 40s and onwards, their register at 
adapted to the mail register in order probably for them to be heard even more in that environment. So the question then goes like this. Is it always good to have a, a low register? Maybe not. In a double blind test, men got to rate women's beauty. The women with the highest pitch were also rated the most beautiful without them actually seeing the photo. But then again, looking at Hollywood today, I had a look at, for instance, Gal Gadot, which we can see in Wonder Woman. Listen to her voice. I mean, there's a giant bill. Which is very low. No, I went you. there last night. Did you really? We just got here last night. We went straight to Times Square and it was just surreal. You looked at that. You I cannot that take it in. It's like me. I'm, I'm from Israel, from this small city and all of a sudden I'm all... Scarlett Johansson, same thing. Romantic way. You don't have to say exactly what, but he did. Yeah. Yeah, he's, a, he's there's got a lot behind that. <laughs> All right, we're looking at actresses in Hollywood. There is a predominance when it comes to actually having a lower register, but being able to combine it with a higher register. I think that's the thing. When we score people in the 110 steps, when it comes to public speaking, having a low register and also having the ability to go up in a high register is very important because it sends different messages. Low register, very, very strong, very authoritative. High register is usually used for humor, where you go, what happened? You can see that in a lot of stand-up comedians, for instance. <laughs> then you might ask, what is, is, should I just have a low register? No, 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 no. The thing with public speaking when it comes to have the 110 steps and any kind of communication is to have a base register, which is good, go down to a lower register when necessary, but being able to go up in a high register when you want to do that. <laughs> For instance, low register is used for authoritative messages, high register is used for comedy, usually stand-up comedy, where you go, what? No! And you can hear that from PewDiePie! <laughs> I think you can do that better. My name is PewDiePie! Now this was skill number 7 out of the 110, that is a low register that he uses. He also applies number 8, which is slow pace. So people who speak in a slow pace usually signal that they're not going anywhere. They're so confident that they can take any room and any space and any place wherever they wish they speak slowly. And then you have number 23, which is vocal fry, where he goes to the end and he goes, I have to go slower and deeper when I do that. So I go, Christmas is coming up, which I really look forward to. Um, New Year as well, of course. And the thing is that at the end of the sentence, you go down and you crumble your voice. I don't know how to really put that, but that's what he does. He's very skilled at it. <laughs> His vocal fry is something different though, because he can actually go fast and have a local fry and low register at the same time. That combination. Jack Jacksepticeye said this, he's something in between God and the devil. And I think that summarizes it beautifully because who is more authoritative than any of of those characters in the world. And thirdly, women are attracted by it because it's so authoritative, means this person will protect them in one way or another. There are so many reasons why Corpse Husband is the love of the internet at the moment. And I must say, I do go to sleep listening to his voice. Now to summarize this, you may now be worried that, hey, I don't have a low register, so I won't ever be authoritative. But the thing is this, out of the 110 skills, there are so many more skills that create authority. For instance, eye contact, a particular kind of gaze. You have slow movements, distinct gestures. You have high volume, low volume, depending on when they're used, they can also be authoritative language, strong rhetorics, using the rhetorical devices overall. All of these together create authority. To conclude, I'm not the imposter. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <sighs>